In terms of the future for MPNs, I'm quite optimistic. I see kind of two different paths here. One is in the short term, which I'll define as the next uh, three years. I think I would really like to see personally the maturity of the data and even final readouts from many of these phase two, phase threes that are either ongoing or partially completed at this time. Uh, that includes the monotherapy drugs, particularly the ones beyond JAK inhibitor I'm interested in, and then these combination or add-on ADVAC approaches that I'm really working in very closely. So I think we'll have a lot of that in the next three years. I think the second aspect, if we shall we go longer, five, seven, 10 years out from now, I think some of the scientific breakthroughs that we're starting to see, which are mind boggling and, and early to understand now, could be big. If I may say a few off the top of my head, I think my colleague, Dr. Jyoti Nanganglia, uh, showed very nicely at uh, the ASH meeting and now continuing on throughout the rest of the year that the Jack uh, mutation or an NPN driver mutation may be acquired as early as just after birth in utero. Just amazing data to suggest that even though a lot of patients develop the disease at an older age, hits may come early and acquired, not necessarily genetic or born with. And I think that's important to understand the pathogenesis of the disease. Second, I think understanding more about the CalR, so not only the mutation itself, but the pathway, and this may end up leading to uh, the potential generation of a completely new area that my colleague, Dr. Ann Mulally, Dr. Robert Kralovics, and other labs are working on, which is can we target CalR in a meaningful way to develop novel therapeutics? And I think finally, another future direction for the field will be the sequencing of all of these uh, agents. So sequencing of JAK inhibitors, when to re-challenge with an old inhibitor, will there be some discovery and biological guidance of resistance mechanisms? Will there be some way to choose? Hopefully we'll have four or five of these JAK inhibitors plus to decide from. And then will there be uh, any potential for understanding what the sequence is from a biological uh, uh, situation? And then the same for the non-JAK inhibitors, right? So I'm very eager and curious to see which of the many drugs my colleagues and I are all working on can be available uh, at a wider level based on toxicity, safety, and clinical benefit profiles. And then, of course, how do we combine all of these in the future?